of the season, which was against Root. And he came out and he did lose to Cats in what was, again, one of the probably one of the most memorable series of the entire tournament already. Um, and now he gets to use here against Team Liquid. I mean, it makes sense, right? Axiom didn't really, you know, Axiom Ace didn't need to use MMA, so allow him to focus on Pro League, allow him to focus on GSL. Um, you know, allow allow him to focus on his single tournament, but you know, they've got him there. They've got him ready to use in case they need him. Maybe could have used him last week when they were 0 3 down against EC Visualize, but they made it anyways, and now in the semi finals, they're not taking any risks at all. MMA is the green Terran player in the upper left hand corner of the map from Acer. Of course, plays for S Benny now. It's kind of a. I, I, I'm, I think I'm correct in saying. MMA is kind of a in like a co-partnership right between Acer and S Benny. So he's like he gets paid to go to foreign events by Acer, but he plays Pro League for S Benny or so. It's it's something like this. The same as like Gumiho with Invasion and MVP. We've seen a lot of these kind of coalitions form nowadays. So it is MMA in the upper left hand corner and um, of course down to the bottom left in case one Terran was not enough for him. Let's see if he can take down another to put his team into the lead here in the semi-final. Guys in the bottom left corner from Team Liquid. It's Mana. Alright guys, so how's everyone doing in the chat here? We've got a bit of a slow opening. Um, once again, a command center first from the Terran player. Uh, CC first, apparently the build of the day. So, um, again, we're going to see this once more here, and we'll see how this leads on. Cactus Valley, the choice of map from MMA, and we'll see what he wants to try and do here. Again, these two teams, I mean, at the start of the season, I think Liquid and Axiom Ace are probably the two fan favourites. They're probably the two teams which everyone wanted to see. You know, Everyone wanted to see these two teams play against each other, and they got put into different groups. Because um, I, I believe I put them as first and second seed or so, um, which is why they were separate groups. Um... And a lot of people were probably expecting this to be one of the finals, you know, probably the finals, but of course, you know, the way the bracket works, um, Liquid finished second in their group behind Dignitas Dead Pixels, who of course are waiting in the finals. I think, so. you know, honestly, I think there's not really been too many surprises. I think a lot of teams that made it to the round of eight were a bit surprising. There was a lot of upsets, teams such as Root and Mind Sanity missing the playoffs, but... Um, you know, I think from the playoff matches, we haven't really seen any upsets so far. I mean, I think you'd expect to say Axiom Mesa, Liquid, Dignitas, Dead Pixels as the top teams. Um, even Baguette, I mean, you look at them, you've got two of the stronger European players right now in Lilbo and Marine Lord, so no surprise to see them doing very well as well. So yeah, it's it's kind of amazing. Well, not really, I guess. It's it's just kind of crazy to see Liquid and Axiom Mesa meet in the semi-finals. I don't really know where I'm going with my points. I'm just... Waffling on, but um, what a um, what a matchup! What a matchup! This is this is an insane matchup just between MMA and Mana. I mean, again, Mana can play very very well when he wants to, and um, again, can has had very strong performances already this year. And then MMA, you know, he's pretty darn good himself. You know, he's been playing very well in Pro League. Um, again, he played a beautiful game. I actually just referenced this game when uh, when watching that last game between Mana and Ryan. We were just talking, you know, um, playing against Hero in Pro League yesterday and played this kind of, again, this really, really nice game where he really was at an advantage for the early stages. And um, again, it was just kind of one war prism coming in and kind of screwing up his uh, entire kind of main base and his entire production line. It's going to be a DT rush from Mana, so going to try and pump out these DTs as fast as he can and look to get something going. We did see that Twilight Council on the way up. I was a little bit hesitant to mention too much detail because, again, it could be Blink, it could be Dark Shrine, and it is going to be Dark Shrine this time around. I mean, Twilight Council openings are not um, rare by any, you know, by any, uh, you know, by any means. They're uh, very, very normal. They, um, see, we see Blink openings all the time here, but the DT Shrine is something we don't see all so much. Engineering Bill on the way for MMA though, he has just been playing a very standard style after his command center first. This time we didn't see any kind of factory play. Uh, this time we just went to see him, uh, saw MMA go straight into two barracks to follow up the CC first, into the third racks, into his gas. Now he can get his factory up, he's got his engineering bay up. He can start a turret if he would like to. We already see a pylon being made for mana, so again, what is he going to be able to get done with these Dark Templars? The Dark Shrine going to be finishing here. 
in a few moments time. And these DTs will be advancing in towards his opponent's natural here very, very shortly. This uh, single marine at the front, patrolling back and forth. I mean, though, is prepared and he's got a turret up at the front, so one DT warped in. I mean, DTs are st they're definitely commitment, but they're not the biggest commitment nowadays, as this DT, what's he going to try and do? It's not going to get much done here, and just has to turn around. Will stay alive, and will pick up a kill on the Marine as it exits, but other than that, this DT is not going to be able to do all too much. Man, just going to transition now into that Robo Bay, into his bling. So nothing overly surprising here from Mana. Um, in terms of the follow-up, I mean, Blink, very standard. Robo Bay, very standard. And from MMA, I mean, again, he's he's just building up. You know, he's gone straight into this kind of um, bio player with three racks. He's going to start pumping out medevacs now. He's got his upgrades coming in. And he's going to have a pretty nice time in here with uh, Combat Shields finishing his first couple of medevacs. He's going to have Stim already finished. Plus one is going to be finished as well. So he's going to be able to move forward here and look to get some damage done. A fourth and fifth barracks being added on as well. Interested to see Mana not actually come into a war prism here. Um, just builds a... Uh, Observer. I mean, he has the potential to, if he would have liked, build a war prism and try and harass with the DTs a little bit more that way. You know, come in and even if he just forces another scan or so, that'd be great. The scan gets used to pick off that observer there, and the little piece of that observer continues to roll away. This DT just marking at the front of the base here. Again, just looking for anything moving out of the map, wants to get any kind of idea about what's going on, what's happening. And uh, these couple of medevacs gonna move across and look to see if they can get anything done over in the main base of mana. But I don't think he's really gonna be able to uh, let them in. So while if a straight up attack right now might actually work kind of okay, I guess there's a Colossus out, so perhaps not. A lot of stalkers here, and again, mana seems to be very well prepared for this potential drop. So he has. Um, I mean, he saw nothing coming out of the front, so he's very smart to just have you know, you know, if nothing's moving out of the front, where can he be hit from? Drops. Third base can be spotted here by this marine. It's actually a fairly fast third base. I actually didn't see this on the way up. Um, it's a bit, of a, <laughs> a bit of a major mistake by me, but I mean, third base so early on here. So mana, he did this. You know, he did this against Ryong too. He took this third base nice and early. And if you can get away with it, if you can get it going, you get yourself into such a great position in terms of your economy. It really is um, really nice to work with. Uh, Marines and Marauders going to work against the rocks here. Looking to see. Um, again, just looking to kind of open up pathways of attack and um, to give him a few more ways to kind of dart in, dart out. You know, as a Terran player, you want to be kind of all over the place. You want to be attacking here, attacking there, attacking everywhere. You know, you, the last thing you want to do really is be taking a big straight up fight. Scan comes down, and there's not many zealots in front of these colossi, so mana has to be a little bit careful right now. He's down in upgrades too. He just gets to the in the thermal lance. Now, a couple of force fields come down, will slow this army to the left, and time up to the right will also slow the advancement of that as uh, these stalkers blink back, allowing the zealots to get towards the front, and great control by mana. This is exactly how he needed to engage this. And he might lose the mothership call by me. Look at this. He's got that warp, uh, that um, time up down once again here, pulling the colossi back. And MMA is just going to keep on chasing it. And is he going to get it? No, he doesn't. Mana keeps it alive. What an engagement by Mana! Absolutely perfect control. Saves the colossus on a single hit point. From start to finish of that engagement, he knew what he needed to do. You know, the initial force fields, perfect. Slow down the advancement of the army. Time up to cover the other side because he doesn't have that many force fields. Only had one century. And then another time warp, very, you know, place at a nice time, blink the stalkers back, let them zealots get in front, had some zealots coming in for the flank as well. This pylon's going to be spotted by this, uh, by these two medifacts, but MMA takes one hell of a loss in that engagement. And, and, you know, I don't blame him for taking the engagement, because if mana had slipped up in any way in that defence, it would have been MMA's fight, you know. I think if you play that engagement ten times over, or if you put, you know, most other people in that situation where you kind of, you know, have them take that engagement as a pros play, they probably lose in the majority of the time. That was insane control from Mana, like seriously, that was that was next level. We're seeing some fantastic matches here tonight, um, you know, everything about them has been great so far, and it seems to just be continuing. Four Colossi now with this army marching across the map, I mean, no upgrades for Mana, he's got charge on the way, but you know, no forges down. We see a bit of an army over to this right hand side, and Mana's just going to go for this, I mean, why not? He's at a point where he he has enough to just attack forward, you know, he hasn't made a, um, he's actually going to open a couple of DTs, so he has Archons too, I forgot about that, so 
Ah, uh, this is really nice. He's going to be able to blink forward. He's going to get a medevac here. If not two, as uh, MMA very late to boost away there. He's going to start steering forwards with the rest of his units, but Amana is already walking in a couple of zones just to buy some time. A dark uh, talk temple as well, but Stan is still there to kind of help with that. This uh, medevac is going to go down, and MMA doesn't have anything over here. And the thing is, he just doesn't have enough on the other side of the map either. He has absolutely nothing over here to be able to kind of really base straight with. I mean, two medevacs of units aren't going to be enough, honestly. And MMA is going to fall here. Axiom Ace's secret weapon, who we just kind of barely ever see, is in so much trouble right now. He's losing so many SCVs. I mean, he's got some Vikings he's been kind of building up and hiding in his main base, but he's, even if he takes down all of these Colossi at this point, I don't know if he's got enough bio to really continue on here. I mean, there's just so much in his main base right now. Back at home, his dropship has been dealt with, and MMA is going to fall. Look at this, 56, 60 workers killed. As well, it's at the third base, ransacking absolutely everything. This is it. MMA is going to fall. Liquid are going to take the lead. Wow. MMA gets knocked down. Mana is finding his stride here today in the SC2 Improved Team League Season 4. He has not really played all too much. I mean, in fact,